That's true. I am going to have a lot of people who hate me when this technology comes out, as I was telling uh, uh, somebody over coffee a little while ago, but our investors will love us, and that's good enough for me. So, let's see. The vehicle, uh, California is losing between $2 billion and $4 billion annually in uncollected carpool lane violation fines because the technology to enforce the law has not existed until now. The DETECT is a series of highly specialized shortwave infrared cameras and lasers that can count the number of occupants in a moving vehicle. This is not a pipe dream or a prototype, it is a production ready product. It's been nine years in development, we've spent over $825,000 of personal funds in its development and it's protected by domestic and international patents. No other company manufactures this product or a similar product. The product is manufactured in California. We market this product exclusively. And in our opinion, it will take another company five to 10 years to create a similar product. It took us well over five years to develop it, and we have got some of the smartest guys in town. According to the most recent study by the United States Department of Transportation and the Federal Highway Administration, the problem with HOV lane violators is acute with documented violation rates on some facilities running well into the double digits. The reason for that is the technology just hasn't been there. Uh, video, it's got poor resolution. During the day you've got reflection, at night it's dark. Uh, infrared, it hasn't been developed, it's expensive. Multi-band infrared hasn't been developed, and it's even more expensive. I'd like to point out that at the bottom where it says HOV Law Enforcement Consideration Handbook, page 135, this is from their report. This is the pooled study. On page 137 of that same report, it says that the DTEC, which was formerly called the Cyclop, gives results indicated a 95% success rate detecting people and rejecting decoy information. Um, so when a car approaches, our camera takes two digital pictures of the occupants at two different frequencies. Skin reflects off one frequency and it is absorbed by the other. The two pictures are then uh, superimposed on one another and it's transmitted to the customer. This is particularly difficult because infrared typically measures the first one ten thousandth of an inch of the first surface that it comes in contact with, which is problematic when you're trying to count people behind a windshield. We found a way around that. The DETECT is capable of detecting individuals of any origin, individuals from dummies, which I have difficulties with sometimes, it's independent of hair loss or cosmetics, temperature independent, it works in all types of weather, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, completely independent of any external lighting. In 2003, the United Kingdom's Department of Transport funded a three-year study to develop a vehicle automated detection system. Dr. Tyrer headed up that project and was the original holder of that patent. Dr. Leon Lobo handled the multispectral imaging prototype, prototyping and system integration, and John Jones was the area, uh, his contribution was in the area of optical strain measurement systems, multispectral and laser induced fluorescent imaging. Dr. Tyra's small research company merged with our company, the Vehicle Occupancy Detection Company as we were pursuing the same goals in order that we could combine our resources and our assets to produce a better product and to bring it into market sooner. Emilio Mercado heads up the technical division for Vehicle Occupancy Detection Company. Emilio was the former product manager at Kodak, responsible for reviewing all revenue generating products. He's been the intellectual property strategy manager for Eastman Kodak and work for Kodak's Venture Fund. He was also the co-founder of the new business development division for Kodak R&D Labs. Emilio is also a board member. 
Stephen Bronfenbrenner has a great deal of experience bringing large projects from conception through to completion. Stephen has been the CFO of the San Francisco Ballet. He's managed over 65, well, he managed the $65 million War Memorial Opera House renovation, played a key role in the design and planning of the $162 million concert hall, as well as numerous other projects. Stephen's expertise is in strategic planning. Craig Waldemont. Our current CFO works for the Federal Home Loan Bank in San Francisco, a government-sponsored bank with assets of over $200 billion, where he manages purchasing capital stock, financial statement preparation, and assists in the preparation and review of regulatory reports and SEC filings. When I started Vehicle Occupancy Detection Company, my goal was to bring the finest minds in their respective fields together to create the best possible product. I believe that we've accomplished that. I'd like to talk to you a little bit now about the potential of the market. I'm going to start small and get big because the numbers get a little funny pretty quickly. So here you see, I hope that's the right, well, that there are 64,000 vehicles per hour that come, that use the HOV lanes in the Bay Area. Using the Bay Bridge as an example, the Bay Bridge, for those of you not from around here, from coming from Oakland to San Francisco, there are 22,000 vehicles per day who use the HOV lane during the nine hours of commute time during the day. 2,500 people, or 11.7% of those people, are violating carpool lane laws. The minimum fine for violating the carpool lane is $380. That's the minimum fine. Let's round it up to $400 because it makes it a little easier. $400 times $2,500 gives us, on one bridge in one day, the potential violation revenue of $1 million. If you start looking out on that, there are 65,000 vehicles in the Bay Area, in District 4, who use the carpool lanes. If we use a conservative violation rate of 10.8 percent and a minimum fine of $380, we get a figure of $24 million in potential fines in one day in one district. There are 12 districts in the state of California. There are currently 2,700 miles of carpool lanes in California. Caltrans estimates a need of 6,000 units for California alone. Considering that California has 40% of all HOV lanes in the United States, we have an estimate of 15,000 units needed for the United States market. The cost of a single unit is $190,000. The profit on a single unit is $100,000, which gives us a projected US profit of $1,500,000,000. That's if we sell the product at $100,000 profit. Lockheed Martin, which owns 80% of all the uh, red light cameras currently um, <clears throat> leases their cameras to municipalities for about $65,000 per month. I would work up those numbers for you, but I didn't have a calculator that went quite that high. Uh, the good news is we've got like four customers, the United States Department of Transportation, the Federal Highway Administration, and Caltrans, with Caltrans being our biggest customer. This is letter 15 days ago from Joe Rouse, who is in charge of the carpool lanes. He wrote, in 2009, Caltrans completed an express lane business plan that identified numerous activities. And the bottom line is, our support of your firm's work is in line with the goals of this plan. This letter serves as an endorsement of those, uh, of those efforts. Our first US installation happens in July of 2011 at the Golden Gate Bridge. Needless to say, we are very excited about where we are and where we're going, and we invite you to join us. Thank you very much.